Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's Friday, September 3rd. We're breaking down this massive 14 game set that we have over on DraftKings today. And I wouldn't say there's an overabundance of awesome pitching options for a 28 team slate, but we do have Shoya Tiny in the Bump, which is always super exciting. We have the Braves in Coors Field, so there's definitely some fun talking points. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, kind of fish member over on Patreon, link is down below in the description for that. We do have NFL content coming out soon. I'll post my first video this weekend, so there's definitely a lot to be excited about. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Price Picks. I'm sure most of you know what it is by now, but if you don't, it's daily fantasy sport and simplified, just you. First, the projections. There's no sharks, 150 max contests, or salary cap restrictions, or anything like that. Just you versus the props that they offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you're new signing over on Price Picks, you can use code CPEN to get a free money bonus. That's an instant deposit matchup to $100 when you tell them I sent you. But I think it'll be it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the pitching, then move on to the bats. And up top here, we have Freddie Peralta, 93 and a bucks. Like that price point quite a bit. Definitely think him and Adam Wainwright should probably be flip-flopped as far as pricing goes. I know Adam Wainwright's been really good. Got to keep in mind, though, three out of those past four starts have been versus Pittsburgh. So it's like, yeah, I'd hope you'd be doing good. I know he's been up to like 40 fantasy points, but still, I like this price point in Peralta a lot better. He gets a pretty good matchup here versus St. Louis. They're not a team that'll strike out too much, but he has a high strike rate, close to 35% on the season. And they're a team that will struggle with power overall versus righty, so I think he's going to be just fine here. And again, not the highest strikeout upside matchup in the world, but he's a guy that can generate strikeouts, so the upside is always there for him. Only a 3.3 implied team total against him. Pretty heavy favorite, 7K prop over in Vegas and like I was mentioning, he's a high strikeout pitcher, 34% on the season. Sierra, XFIP, ERA, all excellent. The only issue here is the walks, but that's really the only issue because he doesn't have too much power. Yeah, he gives up a lot of five balls, but very low hard contact rate, less than a homer allowed per nine. St. Louis is a team that does not really have too much pop versus right. He's definitely a better team versus lefties by quite a bit. So I think Peralta at that price point definitely looks pretty darn good. Cash game and tournament viable. Shoyotani, 8700 bucks. I would say he's probably my favorite pitcher on the slate. He just draws a really good matchup versus Texas. They're a team I pick on pretty much each and every single day. And there's really no downside here. Otani's had like two bad games this year. The rest of the games are pretty much above 20 fantasy points. I know his last start he gave up a few home runs, but it was in Canyon Yards with kind of a break there. But outside of that, he has been very, very strong. The strikeouts are there. Close to a 30% carry on the season. A good ERA, good exit, good Sierra, over 10 Ks per nine. And the walks are now in the single digit range it used to be in the double digit range pretty much each and every single day i look at these stat sheets but we're now at 9.2 percent only a 135 ice is given up has a lean to the ground balls does allow a 35 percent hard contact rate but i can learn to live with that i do like the angel stack quite a bit today would be kind of surprised if he does not pick up that 4.1 bonus over in vegas and like i was saying texas is a team that we can pick on quite a bit here only an 82 wc plus versus righties 24.3 percent k rate 288 woba 152 team ice so they do walk a little bit but I mean, sign me up for Otani. 8700 bucks seems like a steal. I think he should be right around where Freddy Peralta is in the mid-9K range. And the fact that he's below 9K, definitely think that looks very, very good on tonight's slate. I'll probably make him a thumbnail of this video. Kyle Gibson, 8100 bucks, A very, very boring pitcher. He's a much better real-life pitcher than he is for DFS because the guy just does not produce many strikeouts. Carry below 20% on the season. But he gets a fantastic matchup on the road in Miami. A very pitcher-friendly park over there. And this is one of the worst, I mean, the, one of the absolute worst offenses in baseball right now. Team total below 3.5 against him is a slight favor here. 5.5 K prop over in Vegas. And while his numbers aren't great, like I mentioned, his strikeout rate's below 20%, which I kind of hate. The ERA is good below 3, but the XFIP and Sierra, both in the mid-4s, which means regression is due. He's been kind of getting a little bit lucky this year. But the one good thing about him is he doesn't give it too much power. has a lean to the ground balls, limits the hard contact, limits the power, so... I mean, 8100 bucks. I mean, I'm not expecting like seven plus strikeouts here, but if he can get you a handful of strikeouts, pick up the win, go six innings, give up a run or two, have an overall decent game, 8100 bucks is not that bad. And we've seen Gibson a lot more expensive than this. So I actually do think of this price point. He is playable. If you're looking for a tournament option here, we have a no at $7,900. He's on the road in Coors Field, so it's always going to carry a lot of risk. But you know, as a good pitcher, like if we're looking at his numbers on the year, I mean, there's definitely upside to be had. It close to a 27% K rate at 3.3 XFIP, 3.59 Sierra. Doesn't really walk too many guys, only 6.5% walk rate. Gives up a little bit of pop, though. 166 ISO, but has lean to the ground balls. And look, I realize there's a lot of risk in course field, but this is a team that really sucks versus right handed pitching. Obviously, they're better at home, but they only have a 76 WRC. Plus. Like, I mean, he's only for tournaments for me, but I definitely think the upside is there. I don't think the ownership is going to be super high. Then if you're looking for a dirt cheap option here, we have Nestor Cortez, $6,900. I don't really love using lefties versus both more because if you're looking at their splits this year, they actually have a solid team versus left-handed pitching. A 103 WRC+, 319 Woba, 176 ISO. 
22.5% K rate. I mean, this is a solid team versus lefties. They have quite a few guys that have some pop versus them. Trey Mancini, Ryan Mountcastle, Austin Hayes, Santander, like Severino even at the catcher. It's not a bad team versus lefties. It's also a pretty hitter-friendly park in New York, but still only a 3.5 implied team total against them. 66% chance for the win, so very heavy favorite there. I do like the Yankees stack quite a bit tonight. And a 6K prop over in Vegas. And I know the average pitches per game here says 62.5, but that's mostly due to the early portion of the season where he, where he wasn't being used in this role. But we've seen him up to 104 pitches as most recent as like a couple starts ago. So we don't have to worry about pitch count or anything. So Cortez at that price point. It's certainly in play if you want to fit in some expensive stacks today, like the guys in Coors Field for Atlanta or New York or whatever it is. So I definitely like Cortez at that price point. Not sure you have to play him in cash games today, but he's definitely an option if you need some salary relief. But as far as pitching goes, I think it'll be pretty much it. So we'll move right over to today's stacks. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the Atlanta Braves on the road in Coors Field, the best place to hit in all of baseball, especially this time of the year, versus the righty Antonio Sensatella, who is not the worst pitcher out there, but I'm definitely going to give the advantage to the bats here over Sensatella, plus the Rockies bullpen is one of the absolute worst in the entire league. We have a team total close to 6.5 here, and we should get Albies back. He was kind of, it was kind of iffy if he was going to be back yesterday. He was testing his knee out. Unfortunately, he did not make the lineup, but I think he's going to be back today. If he's not, obviously we'll have to change our lineup here a little bit. We'll probably see Adrian Hansa back in the lineup, but we'll have to see how that goes. But I'm assuming Albies is back, but this is a loaded lineup. I mean, he all these guys hit right-handed pitching or left-handed pitching very well for the most part. The top play is going to be Freddie Freeman. But point per dollar-wise, I love Jorge Soler. He's below 4K. He bats second in the order. He has plenty of power in his bat. Love that price point quite a bit. Travis Darno, but was in the lineup yesterday. Assuming Travis Darno is back, 4200 bucks for a catcher in course field who can hit pretty well like him. Like that price point quite a bit. You have Jock Peterson at the bottom of the order. Adam Duvall, he went deep yesterday. Overall, the Braves didn't do too bad. They scored six or seven runs, if I remember correctly. Had a couple homers in there, but a couple of these guys are quite expensive, like Freddie Freeman. But, I mean, I love all these guys in course Field today. Again, my favorite players are going to be Solaire and Freddie Freeman and Travis Darno, but the entire lineup is going to be playable. And moving on over to the New York Yankees, they're at home in the Bronx versus the lefty John Means, and I just like picking on Baltimore for the most part. I know John Means is their best pitcher, but he's still a guy that struggles versus righties when it comes to power, fly balls, hard contact, and homers. And we have quite a few righties in this lineup that can hit lefties very well, especially when it comes to hitting for power. We have a team total close to five and a half here. And I mean, I pretty much like the entire lineup. The lefties are going to be more suited for tournaments. That would be Odor, Joey Gallo, and Anthony Rizzo. But you can play them in tournaments. But as far as cash games go, guys like DJ LeMahieu, Aaron Judge, Stan, like the meat of this order here, Judge and Stan. They're definitely the two best plays projection-wise. Then you have Luke Boyd, 3700 bucks, who can hit lefties very well, especially for pop. But I feel like all the Yankees here quite a bit today. Then moving on over to the NL, we have the Cincinnati Reds at home in Grand American Small Park, one of the best places to hit in all of baseball, versus the lefty Tyler Alexander, who is projected to be the opening pitcher, then Jose Urena after that. So either way, I mean, you can pick on both these guys. So we're going to see a lefty, then we'll see a righty. doesn't really matter, like the entire lineup here. India, Tyler Stevenson, Nick Castellanos. Castellanos will be my favorite play here, starting off versus a lefty. But again, all these guys can hit lefties and righties pretty fine for the most part. Like I'm not really concerned about that. Kyle Farmer, Adrian Suarez, Tyler Naquin, and Aquino here at the bottom. But like all the Reds here, team total close to five and a half. And the Detroit bullpen isn't exactly great either. And both the projected pitchers that we had today, we can definitely pick on quite a bit here. So definitely at the Reds at home in a very, very hitter-friendly park in Cincinnati. Moving on over to the AL West, we have the Houston Astros on the road in San Diego and Petco versus Jake Arrieta, who is just not very good whatsoever. Back in the day in 2016 or whatever year that was, yeah, Jake Arrieta was awesome. Nowadays, he is a punching bag. The team total south of five, which kind of surprised me. When I saw Jake Arrieta was pitching, I was assuming the Astros were going to have a team total like well north of five today. So that's kind of surprising here, and quite a few of these guys are very expensive, but I do like the stack here quite a bit. I think that team total is maybe a little bit too low. If we're looking at area splits in the season, I mean, he has been just not good whatsoever. An ERA above 7, and actually not too far behind that. It's below 5, but still nothing exciting. 18% K rate, a 2.44 ISO given up on the year. Close to a 40% hard contact rate, and well over 2 homers per 9. Struggles more so with the lefties compared to righties. So a guy like Michael Brantley at $4,000. I think he's an excellent one-off cash game play today. Like, if you don't want to full-on stack the Astros, a guy like Michael Brantley and Kyle Tucker are two of the best one-offs on today's slate. But the entire lineup is playable, but I do like the lefties, the couple lefties that we have here. Then moving on over to the Tampa Bay Rays, they're playing at home in the trial, which kind of sucks for bats, but they get a really good matchup here versus Randy Dobnak. And if we're looking at his numbers on the season, nothing impressive whatsoever. So it really makes me like the Tampa Bay Rays here quite a bit. ERA close to 8. The except's a lot better on 4.5, but only a 12% K rate, giving up a 264 ISO on the season. With a 33.5% hard contact rate, over a 400 Woba. Does get a lot of ground balls, though, which can always be a bit annoying, but around 2.25 homers allowed per 9. And above an 8 ERA and over a 5.5 XFIP, 
to left-handed bats. Guys like Brandon Lau and Austin Meadows look really good here, but the entire lineup is in play. Although they are kind of expensive, we have several guys above 5K and a lot of guys in the upper 4K range. But if you can make it work today, you go cheap at pitching with a guy like Nestor Cortez. I do think the Rays are in a pretty good spot today. Again, I hate the park that they're in, but I think they should be just fine. Tito north of 5. And the Minnesota bullpen's not exactly great either. Then the last thing I want to talk about is the LA Angels at home versus Glenn Otto and the Texas Rangers. And what kind of sucks here is since Otani is pitching, we can't play him on offense, which DraftKings really needs to figure out a way to make this work. It's, it sucks. Maybe it's hard to do in the coding, but it just really hurts the overall stack. So unfortunately, they take a bit of a hit there, but a couple guys like David Fletcher, Phil Gosselin, Jared Walsh. I like that Jared Walsh play quite a bit. Let them already match up below 4K betting cleanup. You know, we can hit right-handed pitching very well. But the rest of these guys are absolutely dirt cheap. So if you go double spin up at pitching today, and if you want to play Adam Wainwright at $10,000, be my guest if you want to. But you might have to find some cheap bats to mix in if you want to use the Braves today in Coors Field. So some of these real cheap Los Angeles Angels guys with a team total north of five today. You know, it has been a hitter-friendly park this season over there in Anaheim versus a pretty new pitcher this season in Glen Otto. I hate the idea of going this route here just to save some money because we can't play Otani and everybody else is dirt cheap. But with that being said, I think that'll be pretty much it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, kind of official member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. We have football coming up soon. We have NASCAR and we have baseball. So we have three sports going on. So there's definitely a lot to be excited about. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Prize Picks. It's just you versus the projections. And as of right now, if you're new signing over there, you can use code CPEN to get a free money bonus. It's a deposit match up to $100 when you tell them I sent you. But I think that'll be pretty much it. I will stop rambling. I hope you guys enjoy the start to your weekend. And I'll see you on Saturday for the next video.